Now, let's talk about document stores. As we saw earlier, in a key value store, the value of each pair can be any arbitrary data. For instance, in the case of flights that we talked about earlier. But as we also saw, doing so makes querying difficult as the application needs to know how to interpret the blob of data that is returned with each key. So how about we impose some structure on the data associated with each key? For instance, the associated data must be a JSON or an XML document. And to distinguish this from just arbitrary data, we use the term document to refer to the data that is stored with each key. And in this class, let's use JSON as the illustration. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. It was originally designed for web applications and has since then gained popularity in document stores. In this class, we will use it as an example of the so-called semi-structured data. Here is our first example of a JSON document. In this case, we, this document stores book information. Here we see two books being stored. Notice that we have embedded the schema of each book in the JSON document itself, along with the data also. Why? Because we can allow each book to contain different amounts of data. For instance, here, the first book contains year information, while the second one doesn't, and vice versa for price. So as you recall, all relations must consist of rows and a fixed number of columns. Each row must have the same schema. Since all rows have the same schema, we can store the entire relation in binary format as, as we discussed earlier in the semester for, for performance purposes. But this makes it hard to send data across different databases since each database binary format might differ. JSON and semi-structured data in general is instead more flexible. It doesn't require each stored object to have the same schema. And we store JSON data in text. This is good to send data among multiple databases since they can all read text, textual format. But it is now bad for performance because as you can imagine, storing data in textual format takes up more space compared to binary. And as we will see, querying JSON data is done usually by calling a bunch of functions unlike writing a standalone SQL query. Although new languages targeting JSON and semi-structured data in general are also being developed right now. Formally speaking, a JSON document stores either numerical values, strings, booleans, or the special null value, just like in SQL. These values are collected into objects and they are denoted using curly braces. Each value must be associated with a string key stored with quotation marks. We use a colon to separate the key from its value, and the key value pairs are separated using commas. Finally, we can also store arrays of objects in a JSON document and this is denoted using square brackets. Each value stored in an array can be a primitive value or an object. And unlike relations, arrays are ordered. So we can refer to the stored values inside an array using indexes, just like a Python or Java array. Now, while the JSON standard allows storing duplicate keys in the same object, this is highly discouraged for obvious reasons. So here, rather than storing multiple author key value pairs, 
we should store them using an array of strings instead. Now, how do we interpret a JSON document? Turns out we can actually represent that using a tree. For instance, in this document, we store an array of persons and we can represent the entire document using the tree here shown on the right. In this document, we have two person objects here. The first one is about Mary, and the second one is about John. Remember that objects in an array in JSON are all ordered. Hence, we represent that using two special index nodes in the tree, here shown um, in the right. As we saw, JSON is self-describing. The schema itself is stored with the document. For instance, a person relation with two attributes would be stored in JSON using different key names that are repeated for every JSON person object. This is obviously a disadvantage, although doing so allows us to be more flexible as the schema can actually change for each object, unlike in relational tuples. So how do we store JSON data in the relational DBMS? There are two ways to do it. First, many relational DBMS these days actually come with a JSON data type. So we can just store the entire document as a column in the relation. In the previous example, we store one row per person in the relation. Writing queries now require a mix of SQL and JSON specific calls. For instance, here we retrieve all rows because of the select star, and for each row in person, we filter by the name key in each document and only return those rows called Mary on this, with, with the name. A second way to not mix relational and JSON data together is to actually translate each document into relations. And we'll see that next.